Hi, welcome back to the series of videos on Indias that is Indias with Accounts Man. So in this particular session, we will continue Indias 19 from where we left in the previous session. So in the previous session, we had discussed what exactly do we mean by employee benefits. We had discussed why do we have a standard regarding what you say employee benefits. And we also discussed when do we discharge this employee benefits. We arrived at an answer that employee benefits can be paid at different intervals that is during the employment at the time of termination or post employment and we went on to discuss what is it during employment completely yesterday that is short term as well as long term and as I told you in the previous session we are going to start our today's session with employee benefits to be paid at the time of termination so let us start with discussion for today that is employee benefits at the time of what is it termination that is our point three so come on let us start so point three at termination no first and foremost thing what exactly do you mean by termination termination means stopping employer and employee relationship being abandoned so he is no more your employee and you are no more his employer so that contract of employer employee employer employee is coming to an end so what exactly is it contract of employer employee contract of employer employ employee coming to an end coming to an end when this particular contract comes to an end it might be because of either of the parties it might be a case where the employee will tell boss i'm done i don't want to work in your organization anymore or the employer might might tell employee you need not work in our organization anymore please get lost so it can be either of the cases so the two possible scenarios is it can either be voluntary or it can be involuntary and this particular standard discusses both under this particular what do we mean by voluntary voluntary is employee decision employee will decide stop uh, to stop working and involuntary is employer's decision so employer decides the end of the particular contract between that employer and employee so either of the cases both are covered as termination under our standard for this particular discussion so you might have promised your employee that you will pay certain sum to him on termination of his particular thing so whenever you have promised such sum such sum will become your liability liability as it is future obligation as i've been repeatedly telling you in this particular standard we need to remember the concept of conservatism or prudence which will actually not let you record the expense at a later stage or which will not wait for the date of actual payment to record the liability if there is a future expected loss you would have to record it right now such liability is expected loss you would have to record it at right now you get that so with respect to this liability recognition is to be made immediately with regard to this recognition there is two things that we need to remember one initial recognition the second one lateral recognition so first i am going to discuss initial recognition initial recognition and subsequent thing yeah now the question is when do we initially recognize this liability yeah this liability should be recognized when the organization makes an announcement regarding the termination benefits and the organization in such a place that it cannot withdraw that announcement that he has made so when the organization doesn't have an option to withdraw the option that it has given or the benefit that it has announced then it's a liability you need to recognize it as on that day so i'll tell you it needs to be recognized when okay i'll write it in red yeah initial recognition is when okay company or organization cannot oh, instead of writing doesn't i'll write cannot cannot withdraw 
such benefit yeah the organization has announced such benefit and it cannot withdraw that benefit back so it has to be recognized on this date or okay now you are removing certain employee when would you remove this particular employee assume that the organization is going for an entire reconstruction process and in the reconstruction process you might have heard no internal reconstruction external reconstruction in this process the organization might be removing certain employees you cannot just tell them no leave the organization right now you might have to pay them certain benefit certain money that is nothing but our termination benefits so if the organization is going through such reconstruction when it is proposing such reconstruction only it needs to make provision for such reconstruction cost according to india's 37 so if the reconstruction cost provision is made as on that day so provision for reconstruction costs this is as per ind is 37 yeah either of this you would have to do as on this date or as on this date whichever is earlier whichever is earlier you get that so we need to take two dates first one is the date on which the company cannot withdraw that benefit that it has announced anymore it has promised something second date is the date on which the reconstruction expenses provision has been initiated as per india's 37 so we'll consider both the dates earliest among these dates is the date on which initial recognition has to be made and this particular recognition has to be subsequently measured that i'll write in the next particular what is a page this liability which is already recognized now at regular intervals okay subsequent recognition yeah subsequent recognition of liability what liability are we talking about termination benefit yeah subsequent recognition of liability meaning it has to be reassessed it has to be reassessed at regular intervals yeah at regular intervals we need to reconsider if there is any increase in the liability or decrease in the liability and whenever such increase is there it has to be accounted if there is increase in the liability it will become our expense you got that point so i'll write that also for you increase in liability would mean expense that has to be transferred to our pl so this is the discussion what we need to note as a very important point is whenever we talk about termination benefit with regard to recognition we need to talk little to, termination benefit means the services have been already received yeah services received i'll write here services already received you get that and you are now throwing them out of the organization so now the entire discussion is with regard to consideration with regard to consideration okay i can write it a little better as we been discussing the entire chapter is about or entire stand is about two points one is services and other one is consideration services is received now we are trying to discuss with regard to consideration yeah with regard to consideration we need to check whether the consideration is to be paid immediately on termination or it can be paid later yeah to be paid immediately i'll write here to be paid immediately paid later you get that paid later means example our provident fund or any insurance that is basically given to our employee whenever i promise provident fund assume that my employee leaves today i will not give him entire pf one shot pf will be paid to him in installments at the end of that's respective period every month yeah till the time that is promised and insurance will be paid at the time of maturity or at the time of what is a risk materializing you get that it will not be paid to him instantly so it is to be paid later you get that so whenever there is an option whenever there is a what to say uh, no requirement to pay it immediately and it is supposed to be paid later it is not to be regarded as termination benefit it is to be treated as if this particular item is post employment benefits 
it is to be treated as post employment benefit treatment yeah it will not be treated as don't say termination benefit it will be treated as a post employment benefit now with regard to to be paid immediately let us start discussing if it is to be paid immediately the liability is to pay immediately but are you expecting to pay it within 12 months from the end of reporting period or are you expecting to pay it after the 12 months from the end of reporting period is a determinant factor it is not about when are you liable to pay it's about when are you expecting to pay you get that so now let us write expected to be paid expected to be settled yeah two categories number 1 before 12 months from reporting period next one is after 12 months from reporting period doesn't this term sound a little familiar yes when we discuss short term benefits i told it to you very clearly short term employee benefits are those benefits which are supposed to be paid with which are expected to be paid wholly within the period of 12 months from the end of reporting period so whenever you are expecting to pay before 12 months from the reporting period this particular thing it has to be accounted like short term benefits like the way we discussed the treatment of short term benefits that's how we're going to record this particular liability or if it is to be paid after 12 months from the end of the reporting period not to be paid it is like expected to be paid after 12 months from the end of reporting period this has to be treated like long term benefits and this is how basically we account for what to say the liability arising because of termination benefits so we discussed at the time of termination initial and subsequent subsequent we couldn't discuss in this part so i wrote it here subsequent liability recognition would basically come up like this so we are done with this subsequent benefits also sorry we are done with termination benefits also so the last thing that's remaining you now with respect to uh, this particular standard is after termination or post employment benefits so let us now discuss the fourth and the last part of our standard that is after termination or post employment benefits come on post employment benefits a very important aspect yeah post employment benefit means the benefits that are given to the employee after they retire it is not on termination after termination you get that so it is the benefits that is returned to the employee after the termination for the benefits for the services that is rendered by the employee during his service term so the services is received and the liability regard to benefits is to be settled later so whenever we see post employment benefits there are two important things that we need to learn yeah they are defined contribution plan and the next one is defined benefit plan yeah so very important point so let us now discuss this to understand the last part of our standard so first one is defined contribution meaning me being an employer i know how much money should i be contributing and at the end i should pay it down to the employee so the amount of my contribution is predetermined and i know how much should i be contributing defined benefit means i have not put a monetary capping i have told my employee that i'll give him certain benefits and on that day how much ever money it might cost for those benefits it has to be borne by me you get that i have not told him how much money i have told him benefits like i have told him in case of disability or in case of death or in case of any happening i'm going to pay you so much so i have told you that i'll pay i'll tell i would say i'm i'm going to handle that particular situation to make it good for you but i have not told you the amount that i'm going to pay so whatever the cost that will be incurred on that date should be compensated by the employer that becomes defined benefit plan here the benefit is promised to the employee and not the monetary amount whereas when you come to defined contribution it is like i have told my employee that i'll contribute so much but with that money will that particular situation be handled or not is not something that i'm not worried about you get that so with respect to defined contribution plan 
yeah let me write the differences down for you with respect to defined contribution plan obligation is limited obligation is limited when we talk about obligation we're talking about legal and constructive obligation yeah that is limited to the amount that i'm supposed to contribute if you ask me for an example the best example for this will be example it will be provident fund you get that now every month i'll contribute 8% of the salary to provident fund or some percentage so every month i'm going to contribute so much yeah and at the end whatever the money lump sum comes it will go to it will go to my employee whereas i'm not promising how much money i'm just telling that i am i'm going to contribute this much the amount of my contribution is fixed so my obligation is predetermined so obligation is limited whereas when we go to defined benefit plan obligation is not limited obligation is not limited so on that day if the or to say that particular instance is terrible then i would have to shell out more money to give him the benefit that i promised or on that day the event that's happening is small then i would have to pay him lesser money to handle that particular situation the example that would fit in this particular scenario very ideally would be gratuity you get that so assume that i promised him some gratuity that gratuity is dependent upon the last month's salary you get that so whenever if the last month salary is high i would have to pay him more gratuity if the last month salary is less i would have to pay him less gratuity so it is all dependent on the happening or non happening of certain events on that case so we are not really sure the obligation is not limited it can be any amount you get that so when the obligation is not limited we can't be quite no see there is a future obligation because of our uh, concept of prudence or conservatism we have to record for this liability right now and discuss the recognition little later so we've been discussing the same thing throughout so future liability we'd have to start making provision right now but in the case of defined contribution plan it becomes very easy you get that whereas if it is defined benefit plan on that day you don't know how much money will you shell out you get that so what do you do you make a best estimate possible of the variance that is going to happen on that day. variance means there it can be anything variance means it can be up it can be down it is not fixed and being not fixed is variance so the best estimate of a future variable item available on this date is what we're going to find that is called as actuary now tell me do we need a concept of actuary in defined contribution plan we don't need the concept of actuary why we know actual amount when we know the actual amount why will you go for best estimate whereas in the case of defined benefit plan do we have the actual amount no we go for the best estimate now what do we mean by actuary actuary means best estimate of variance based on lot of things yeah variance that i can call it future yeah future variable amount whatever is there i am going to find the best estimate so i am going trying to use my brain and then arrive at some calculation as to what exactly will be the amount that i would have to shell out to give that benefit to my employee and i'll arrive at it this is actuary so actuary is needed in the case of defined benefit plan it is not required in the case of what is a defined contribution plan the next important point is discounting yeah discounting is again not required in the case of defined contribution plan why see when i tell that uh, there is a defined amount that i need to contribute i'll contribute so much however this should be required however required required if it is long term benefit like with regard to our provident fund only usually i would have to pay it at the end of every month isn't it so every month means from the time the service is taken i am going to pay that particular liability within 12 months from the end of reporting period meaning the service is taken now i would have to pay in the same month guys in fact you get that whereas if i have an option to pay that particular liability after the end of reporting period and after 12 months from the end of that reporting period then it will become like long term then we'll go for discounting if not usually we don't do any discounting for defined contribution plan that's a very exceptional case however what about this defined benefit plan with respect to defined benefit plan usually we go for discounting 
now we will go to our next point so we discuss these two come on let us discuss the risk factor so next one is risk yeah there are two types of risks okay one is actuary risk and the next one is discounting risk so first and foremost point is what exactly do you mean by risk risk means the actual not being as what is expected yeah you expect it to be something if the original or the reality is not equal to the expectation that becomes risk now the actual risk meaning if in the future you expect some money to be paid you don't know what is the amount so you use all your brains you use actuarial science and everything and you arrive at that amount what if the original liability is not equal to that actual expectation that is the actual risk you get that next one is discounting risk or we can call it investing risk what do i call it investment risk investment risk okay you want 10000 rupees at the end of 3 years so you start saving 2000 every every year so that it it along with interest will come down to 10000 rupees at the end of 3 years but amount that you invested with interest if it doesn't come down to 10000 what are the odds of that happening that is investment risk you get that so there is a future liability with regard to which you are planning assets now that's plan assets so investing in it what if the plan assets along with interest doesn't turn out to be sufficient amount to pay our liability as on that date that becomes my investment risk what we need to remember here is with regard to defined contribution plan as well as defined benefit plan what is the risk so with respect to actuary what we need to remember is actuary will not exist in defined contribution plan so there is no concept of actuary risk only however actuary exists in the case of defined benefit plan so there will be actuary risk and the next point is with regard to investment the risk would be there and this risk should be borne by employee yeah this risk has to be borne by whom employee i'll write here employee has to bear this risk employee bears the risk yeah example if we go back to our provident fund example assume that employee had expected 1 lakh rupees of provident fund you get that whereas there is some upper niche and then amount of provident fund withdrawal came down to only 80000 so the investment has changed now the expectation is not met but will organization compensate for that loss of difference no organization's liability is limited and it is restricted to the promised amount and they have done that if there is any difference in the total amount then the difference is because of lot of other factors which has to be taken care by employee only and the organization will not bear such thing whereas if the organization has promised benefit saying that okay i will take care of this particular medical expense or i'll pay you so much uh, gratuity that is so many times of your salary i have promised so much such things and to pay that i have started saving right now as an organization in my plan assets unfortunately my plan assets as on that date didn't turn up or didn't basically generate enough money to pay such liability so there is shortage in that asset can i tell me tell my employee sorry i can't give you the benefit that i promised because my assets fell short no that is my mistake my estimation went wrong my investment risk materialized so this particular risk has to be borne by organization so this is the important part organization has to bear the risk yeah this is our important point of discussion because the standard is seen from the perspective of the organization and not from the perspective of the what do you say the employee so this was the discussion with regard to defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan however we are not done with the complete discussion with regard to defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan we are yet to discuss regarding the recognition of defined contribution and defined benefit how to recognize and what is the accounting treatment and how would it appear in your balance sheet pl and everything so we'll keep this for our tomorrow's discussion so tomorrow we'll come back with post employment benefits and discuss with regard to employee benefit defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan and with their recognition as further point so see you all in the next video till then stay in the game